Hello, everybody, and welcome to round eight of the Magic Online Community Cup. I'm Brian David Marshall. I'm joined by Randy Bueller. And there you see Randy's fellow Hall of Famer, Dave Humphreys, on the left, and Star City Games Invitational winner, Tom Ross. Back to back Invitational winner. Back to back Invitational winner, uh, a Pro Tour top eight competitor uh, in uh, Honolulu in 2009. Uh, you know, Boss MTG, if you follow Magic Streams, he, he's, a, he's a pretty big streamer. Uh, and he, he likes one-on-one -on -one boost draft. That's his format of choice. Yeah, I was reading about that. He definitely uh, likes the reaction, like where you know everything that they have and you're just trying to outmaneuver right. them. Uh, <laughs> inventor of the untimed match, David Humphreys. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> five, five Pro Tour top eights. He's a Pro Tour champion. Yep. Um, you know, really was like our rival of yours, right? Team, team sure. YMG, Team CMU. That was such sure. a great rivalry. It was almost like the, the Channel Fireball uh, Pantheon kind of rivalry, but you know we're gonna watch these guys play right now. They are getting started. Looks like they're drawing their hands, and we are ready to go. There you go. I see a, a befoul. Oh, look at look at the cards in Tom Ross's deck. Jeez. Back. Vile Requiem is a very good one. The Foul's fine. <laughs> the Foul's only fine in this context. Right. Vi Vile Requiem is just this ticking clock, although we, you know, see some. Dave Humphreys. Yeah, the Tom Ross hand looks like it matches up particularly well against Green as well. Right. Golgari Long Legs probably. Uh, going to yeah. be a big deal here. If there's one thing those great, those black spells are good at doing, it's blowing up big green dorks. Well, Penumbra Spider will come back. Penumbra Spider will come back. Golgari long legs can't be targeted by, you know, non-black. Uh, although Befoul is going to get it, right? Befoul non-black? I don't see a Golgari long legs. Oh, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And a number spider comes down, and you know that its job is just—I mean, it's—it's it's fitting that it's in Dave Humphrey's deck, <laughs> right? Because it's—it's just there to gum up the game, and then you know maybe you kill it, and then it gums up the game again. And Vendetta, Vendetta too. Wow. Grave Digger for the the Rakdos Ragmut. Kirun. I like Tom's deck for sure. <laughs> the new Benalia. <laughs> oh, by the way, we have our first Pestilence sighting. Oh. Big toughness green creatures with Pestilence. Does that change the math? It certainly makes that key no. rune a lot worse. Yeah. No reason for Dave to play out the Pestilence here. He should just keep developing his board position. Yeah, absolutely. And he goes with the Sparloth Ancient. Sure. Builds up spore counters. Or has it died of vendetta? <laughs> Before we can even fully read the text, it will basically let you make a sa sapling for two uh, instead of three uh, spore counters. Now we have the original Scryland. New Benalia. Not as good as the more modern Scryland. No, no. It's, uh, it only makes white. I think we're going to see. Uh, I think we're going to see Vile Requiem here. Start. Uh, sure. Start working on some verse counters. Yeah. Make the wow, Death Rattle too. So many removal spells. <laughs> and, De and Death Rattle will be able to deal. Oh no, it will not. Let's target non-green yeah, creature. So Golgari Go Longlegs is going to have a, a, a little. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Dodges everything. Uh, why don't you show people Vile Requiem? I, I, I'm sure people aren't super familiar with it. The beginning of your upkeep, you could put a first counter on it, and then one black, sacrifice it. You get to destroy X target non-black creatures equal to the number of first counters. Just one of many crazy saga cards. Many ways for black to kill things in Urza Saga, indeed. 
both players gave in to the pull of the Black Earth Saga cards. Ooh. Well, here's the long legs. Can't get it with Vile Requiem. Can't get it with Death Rattle. It may actually do some work here. Oh, and there's a Stagger Shock lock. Wow, Tom's Jeez. deck is... Yeah, no, it looks great. Just black and red, armory. blow up everything. Oh, yeah, the black green 5-4 is surprisingly <laughs> just vanilla 5-4. Penumbra Spider is also going to take two cards to deal with. Right. Yeah, for how good, like five superstar cards in Tom's hand right now. Yeah. And none of them actually... I guess he can, um, he can actually block with Key Rune and Stagger Shock. Does he have the mana to pull that off? I think he does. He can try to get into combat with the long legs. Dave can ruin that plan with a Pestilence in play, but it'll take him a little bit. And yeah, I think Dave sees it and doesn't want to attack with long legs. Yeah, and, they, and again, these players have been able to... He, they may have scouted each other's decks out already. He may be aware of all the removal in Tom's deck. Maybe. I mean, Dave must also... I mean, he can read Vile Requiem and know that there's a lot of value in having a black creature in play. Right. They just attacked the spider. I mean... Tom's already down to 12. Yep. I mean, Tom could do the whole stagger shock trick with the key rune versus the spider, but it doesn't feel like it turns much of a profit. He may, did he price himself into that, though, by not casting the, 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 rage the dog? Yeah, the rage month. It takes him, goes to 10, and we're going to see Pestilence hit the board. Yeah. Now that key rune <laughs> is super fragile. And Pestilence here is really just a way for Dave to close this game out. <laughs> yeah, no, he's happy to just deal damage to Tom's face with it. Sure, we both take two. It does mean that he, he can atta start attacking with long legs because he doesn't have to fear a block from the key room. Uh, are, are we going to see Mafal on a swamp? Really? I mean, we could, but I don't know that Tom can afford to spend his mana doing that. He's already in this awkward spot where... He his, didn't do anything with his mana this turn. He, he can bury, right, his Befowl and his Death Rattle are just kind of nerfed at the moment. All right, Tom's just going for Stagger Shock. Targeting Dave's face? What's he, yeah. Yeah. Stagger Shock, you. Okay, full credit to Humphreys, by the way. He smelled out a trick. He did not attack with long legs. He's, he doesn't, he can't see Tom's hand the way we can, and he played that turn really smart. Dave, Dave Humphreys is like Hannibal Lecter for tricks. <laughs> <laughs> now what is Tom doing with the, the, the rebounded copy of the Stagger Shock? Yeah, if Tom had just played out the, the, the Rage, the Rage Mutt, is it Rage Mutt? Yeah. He uh, would have been a much more effective use of his mana last turn. I mean, he probably would have gotten whacked by the long legs. I don't know, maybe he saved damage that way. Rage Mutt's not the greatest blocker, but was he hoping to set up a surprise lifelink haste attack? Man, yeah. If, uh, if Dave had done what Tom wanted him to do, Tom would have killed the long legs and then untapped and attacked with a lifelinker. <laughs> Humphreys just saw through everything. So now he's got to just play Rage Mutt, which he could have done last turn. He can't do anything but say go. Oh, he can attack through. Okay. Right, he, he stagger shocked the long legs. Right. That's what he's accomplished. Yeah. He stagger shocked to deal two to Dave, two to the long legs, which means Dave is probably just going to take a hit from Rage Mutt. Tom's able to get the lifelink turned yeah. on. Although, wow, I mean, Swamp off the top for Humphreys would be lethal. Would both kill the Rage Mutt and... Neither of his creatures. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how Tom was supposed to play this. Tom, uh, sort of a question, like, if he played Rage Mutt last turn, would he be in better shape? I don't know. His, his, if Dave had done what Tom wanted him to do, Tom's line would have been awesome. Right. But Dave saw through it, so I don't know. So Tom's line was pretty mediocre. Right. So, 
slime molding for Dave. Hmm. Make another big green thing that survives pestilence. Yeah, Although it vile yeah, it dies from vile requiem. It's, it's, so. It just smashes for seven, right? Right. Sm smash for seven and... Probably do nothing? Right, smash for seven, pestilence for two. At the end of the turn... Right. You know, uh... He's going to take Tom a hit from the three power life linkers. Right. The Tom, Tom will get a chance to gain three. I mean, what Dave could leave the spider on defense, so that if Rage Mod attacks, he can uh, trade it, like one point of pestilence damage and two from the spider. But yeah, he decides to attack for seven. Wow, he's just gonna play into the into the vile requiem. Also playing the last card out of his hand. Right. The Vile Requiem is two mana to activate. That may be part of what he's thinking is he makes Tom spend two mana on that. He still gets the spider back. Right. And this way Tom has to blow the Requiem if he wants to attack with the Rage Mutt. Although we, we know that uh, Tom has Bound in Silence. True. To, you know, potentially take a different line here. Well, I think you, um, Vile Requiem... The two guys, you, you <coughs> found in silence the long legs. Maybe. Uh, Dave's line's actually pretty clever here because if Tom does use the Vile Requiem, Dave will wind up with an untapped 2-4 spider token. Right. So Tom does not get an attack here. Dave has actually smartly able to attack with the spider and pseudo and have a defender one way or the other. He's either going to get to block with a 5-5 five, five ooze or a 2-4 spider and either one of them is good enough to kill the rage mod thanks to the point of pestilence damage which could help out the spider. Spider Although, token will go down but you do what you got to do. Suddenly death rattle is live on the spider token. Right. So he's going to vile requiem. And then, yeah, it, I guess Tom does have the option to death rattle the spider token, hit with Rage Mutt, and then go up to nine from Lifelink. He's still dead, though. He takes five plus two plus two. Yeah. Well, he, he's not going to attack. Well, that's awesome. I don't think he can attack. He can bind and silence the long legs, is what he can do. Right. And then just play defense against the spider. Yeah, right. Tom has all the cards in his hand that he needs. Just doesn't have the time. Right, he doesn't have the time. Part of it because he took a turn off to try to get Dave to two for one himself. Partially because there's pestilence on the other side of the table. <laughs> Dave's going to pestilence as a response. Oh, God, Dave Humphreys is so smart. This means he can now block with Spider Token and have it survive. Right. So smart. Yeah, now that 2-4 can just beat up the 3-3 three, three in combat. <laughs> yeah. Bound and Silence has to go on. Yeah, I think that's right. Legs. Swamp off the top is so huge, Dave can draw it. We can swamp off the top wins the game, because he can yeah. pestilence away the Rage Mutt and hit for two with the spider. Meanwhile, I suspect Dave is going to pestilence for one here. Yeah, Tom not able to attack. Pestilence is for one. Right, Swamp, he just... Oh. Etched Oracle. It's a 3-3, three, three. if you were willing to tap a swamp for it. <laughs> Opponent's on an even life total. Would I don't you, know that you, you want to tap not. a swamp for it. Yeah, this feels like you just shift the turn, right? Leave up Pestilence. I mean, Dave wins if he goes end step Pestilence for two, untap Pestilence for two. Right. The, the, the Rage Mutt throws that math. 
Yeah, but the Rage Mutt's going to die. If the Rage Mutt wants to get into combat, it's going right. to die. You're right. Tom will be obliged to get it into combat, right. so it's not to lose to that line. That's not bad for Dave. Hey, Death Rattle's just happy to bring something to the party next turn. <laughs> Gravedigger's like, someday. <laughs> Gravedigger seems the, overly optimistic I can in get Tom's the, deck. I can get the Rage Mud back. I'm thinking about that Oracle. Yeah, goes for it. Okay. Two, three, three. One point of pestilence. Is he attacking? He can't attack the spider here, right? Could. That's. Sunhome Enforcer? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Actually, there, there are some other creatures besides Gravedigger and Rakdos <laughs> Rage Mutt and Tom Ross's <laughs> removal theme deck. in the rage mine and uh, waits for Dave to do something. Mm -hmm. Dave has to block and kill it here. I think it's just a question of whether he wants to trade the Oracle or the spider for it. Which, in general, I don't know what the answer is. He decides to keep the black creature. Seems plausible. So yeah, Oracle trades for Rage Mutt, and now Gravedigger can get back the Rage Mutt. Yeah, I'm just going to see. Yeah, we see Sun Home Enforcer. Enforcer. Two four. More lifelink. More lifelink. Yep. Fire breathing and lifelink. That card's actually going to be going to be a pretty big swing here. We can uh, death rattle the, the spider, get that guy in, and, and suddenly the, the game is going in the opposite direction. Yeah, maybe. But for Tom Ross. There's, There's that the third, third swap. Would have been lethal last turn. Not so much here. Do you attack Spider into Sunhome Enforcer? Yeah, you just attack, right? I don't know that I would have played the Swamp first. I think, because if Humphreys attacks, Tom has to block, right? Maybe not. If Tom took it, yeah, I guess that would be bad. This way, well, Hump wants to block. Right. Doesn't know about the Death Rattle, obviously. Right. I think Tom is just going to death rattle on his turn here. Yep. Wow. This is this is this is a huge turn for Tom. Yeah. No. He. I thought he had fallen too far behind on that one turn, where uh, he tried to trick Dave. And he even into gets a bad to save. Attack. He even gets to save his rage mutt here. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. No. This is great. Tom, I think Tom is in great shape now. Right, he's going to be able to attack for four with lifelink here, if he wants to. Right. He's able to gain life faster than the Pestilence can kill him. So Hump can't finish him out with Pestilence. Like, Tom's ahead on the board, and he's the one with three cards in his hand. Yeah. Really well played by both players, actually. Dave saw through the trap, but kind of feel like the top of his deck let him down a little bit. Like, when he needed to draw a swamp, he didn't. And when he needed to draw a spell, he drew the swamp. Right. Do, now, let me ask you a question. Is befouling a swamp here <laughs> reasonable? So that you take away Pestilence for four? Yes. Now, it's not, it's not the easy. line. It's not the line, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you do that, you can't fire breathe. He could have made his guy a three-four. 
and Casper Fallon Swamp? I don't know. It's, it's an inter- interesting question. I, I honestly don't know which of those lines is better. I mean, I guess it's it fine is, for him if pestilence goes away. If he pestilence is before... It goes away, yeah. But, I mean, Dave would happily do that at this point. So maybe that means Buffalo would have been right. It adds a whole turn to the game, though, if he does it. Well, it's a five-toughness creature. Although, it does die to Buffalo. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what's happening here. Yo. Rot Farm comes out, picks up the land. Tom continues to be in great shape. Gets to Fire Breathe once this turn, put his opponent at five. Get his life total back up to 13. What would have considered banaliing there? <laughs> <laughs> You would have picked up the Skyland? Yeah, yeah, I would have picked up the Skyland for sure. I did not I did not think Tom Ross was going to come either. back to this game. I did not either. I mean, I thought his hand was amazing at the beginning of the game, but right. I, th- I felt like Hump had sniffed out all the traps and actually uh, navigated a path, but cool game. There's Cold-Eyed Selkie for Dave Humphreys. AKA a chump blocker. Pacifism. <laughs> no chump blocking for you. And no cards activate, either. Yeah, okay. Activate Sun Home Enforcer twice. Yeah. And again, Still in the red. <laughs> Dave goes to one, so Pestilence is now dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So much removal. Tom Ross is like, I have the nuts black-red removal deck. Let me splash white for pacifism and bound in silence. And, and some home enforcer, which is, has actually just... True, true. You know, I mean, I, I, I assume and he Skyland. just said, I just need as much life gain as possible. I'm going to be under an early assault. I'm going to take control sure. of the game, and then I need Rakdos Rage Mutt and some home enforcer to, like, scratch me back in the game. And that's exactly how it played out. True. Um, any other two creatures of comparable size right, right. in those spots would not, it, without they, lifelink, would not have done He it needed both his creatures to be yeah. lifelinkers. He needed every single point of life he gained. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the swamp off the top would have gotten it done for Dave on that one, one key turn. Wow, close game. That yeah, was a good one. That was a good game. But, I mean, both players had land and spells. There were a lot of decisions. Um, Hey, hey, Marshall, what, what's going on in the region? I don't know if we're going to be able to uh, go over there or not, but uh, what are you seeing? Yeah, so we've actually got quite a bit of action happening here. I was watching a few minutes ago, and I'm still on the match right now. We, we can watch it, uh, at least part of it in action here, but while the other guys are cyborging if we want. But uh, Aaron Forsyth versus Sean Plott, and Aaron, <laughs> he went big in the first game. Now, it didn't actually end up paying off. Well, I mean, he, he won his game, uh, but what he wanted to do was absolutely insane. He actually had a Palaka Worm that had flying, <laughs> and it had, whenever it does damage to an opponent, you get that many Safferling tokens, <laughs> and it already has Trample. <laughs> and then, uh, and, and Sean Plot was able to mitigate that a little bit uh, by eventually killing it with a Death Touch blocker and, and throwing some pump spells as well at it. Um, but unfortunately for Sean, the flag bearer showed up again. <laughs> oh no! And that ended things pretty quickly. I just he wasn't able to maneuver anymore, and, and Aaron had a, a much bigger board state was able to kill him. This game is the second game now. Now Aaron won that first game, and it uh, looks like it's gone a little bit of a different way here. Aaron's got a two-two flyer, a one-two stinkweed imp here, and he's also got a Donglair invoker, but with only four mana. You can see Donglair invoker has a pretty expensive activated ability, but it's also an insanely good activated ability, so if, if Aaron can push this game into the later stages, he might be able to start taking over with Donglair Invoker. Now on the other side, though, it looks like Sean's had a pretty nice start. Karazda Guild Mage, here's a Serpent Warrior. It gives you a look at what magic cards used to look like on many <laughs> levels. <laughs> kind of interesting. And then there's a Sluiceway Scorpion and a Necroplasm here as well. So. Sean Plot fully dedicated to the Orzov Guild here, and it's interesting, you know, I don't know if he just happened to have this deck, but I saw him, <coughs> sorry, not Orzov, I meant um, Golgari. 
I saw him wearing a Golgari t-shirt yesterday also. I, I don't know if he forced it and sealed, but it looks <laughs> to be here one way or another, and he certainly got a better board state going than his opponent. So I think the question is, can Aaron make this game go long? And well, I don't you, know the you, answer. You keep an eye on that game for okay. us, Marshall. We're, we're going to go back to our, our feature match here between uh, Dave Humphreys and Tom Ross. They're already underway. Each, each player has land, I believe, uh, Dave Humphreys is duressing a removal spell even as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he almost missed. Only one. By the way, Wizards up three matches to zero so far and confirmed. Yeah. Oh my. Again. Turian smacked down Chion in a hurry. Lapilli beat Lapore. What's the third one? So duress, I mean, basically can only take path to exile. Oh, worth over Bjorn. Yeah, I think it's just path. Yeah, he almost missed. I'm sure that came in. You don't actually normally run to rest just because so many sealed decks are just creatures and right, lands. Right, 18 creatures, 5 spells, right. <laughs> 17 lands. But I, I mean, I think Hump was correct to bring it in after what he saw in game 1. And now he's just, he's writing down the hand. The only reason the spell hasn't resolved, I see Dave typing. He's just got notepad up, making sure that he can remember everything that happened here. Oh, he typed it into the chat, sure. And then he's gonna he's got a couple of uh, cheap creatures that he can he can come out with pretty quickly, albino troll. Mm-hmm. He's uh, he's in danger of getting flooded, although having a guild mage takes a lot of the sting out of a mana flood. Right. If that guild mage survives and he has every reason to think that it will now, he can just sink his mana into that. Spectral searchlight for uh, Yeah, first first ability not super useful in a flood game, but the second one just Yeah. Five, Five mana. mana, make him bigger. Wow, now he can go fertile ground into albino troll on turn three. Not bad. Yeah, and then you know start start uh, using that Golgari uh, guild mage on uh, turn four. Ability. Yeah. Well, he'll have to pay Echo on turn yeah, four. Yeah. Soon. I mean, he would rather have had a spell, but fertile ground is hey, fertile ground's a little scary. He saw the foul last <laughs> game. <laughs> He could pay the upkeep for Albino Troll even if he gets yeah. Befoul. <laughs> like, the Befouls are super scary when you tap out for a creature with Echo, and then instead of Befouling your creature with Echo, they Befoul your land. Famous, Stings a little. Famously in a Pro Tour. Top eight, absolutely. <laughs> Top eight of a Pro Tour. Uh, Mike Long, Albino Troll, Steve Almohony Schwartz, Ritual Befoul. Dark Ritual Befoul your forest. All, all the mana that... Uh, Tom Ross is going to need. Spectral Search, like another card that uh, is affected by mana burn <laughs> rules. Sure. Another okay. one for Wizards. Ryan Speed defeats Aaron Campbell. Wow, so they're up 4 0 so far this round? 4 0. Wow. So, uh, there you see Echo. So, e Echo is an ability you got to pay the. You've got to p basically pay the casting cost again, or some. I don't know. If, were there yeah. any non three, three re echoes? No, echo was always going to be the same as the casting cost. Originally, yeah. Originally, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Later on, different stuff happened. But yeah, three, three regenerator for two would still be good, even in modern cu yeah. cast creature curves. So. Yeah, Bino Troll made he made constructed. He was good. Yeah. Stompy deck to run in. Four oh, like mana for Tom Ross. He's considering the cycle here on Street Race. <laughs> really? Yeah, his hand is super clunky. He could just run out. He's, he's just, he's, or he's gonna, or he's gonna run out. Uh, Sun Home Enforcer. Yeah, one of those. I mean, think we blocks a little better. Just you know, I just have for a the attachments to Street Wraith, Grave Digger, Street Wraith. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's decided the 2-4 lifelinker is better, I think. Yeah, it, it is. There's something to be said for getting Stinkweed out there. Just block, death touch, get it back. So now, now you know, you talked about, you know, what to do with your mana. Right. We see a situation where Dave Humphries is doing nothing but, mm -hmm. but has a great place to sink it. Yes. I'm sure he would rather have had some spells, yes. but... Thank goodness for that guild mage. Another win in, I'm not going to say who it was, but it was for wizards. Really? Wow. So, so 5-0 I'm, I'm keeping things shrouded just in case I pick it as my replay. Got it. 
So they're down four points right now. Wow. That 19 just dropped to four. Wow. <laughs> so just albino troll getting in. Tom Ross is not going to block here. And Hump has nothing better to do than commit the all the man in the plus yeah. one plus one counter now. <laughs> Absolutely. He drops Tom to nine. Okay, where's all the removal spells? Remember the part where all the <laughs> all the creatures could just die? Now he's looking at that street wraith. Pay two life. Stings a little, but do what you gotta do. Pacifism. That helps. Right, he, he doesn't yeah. know that there's nothing but three lands in right, his right. hand, so yeah. Yeah, you pacifism a bino troll now, right? And then drop a pocrisite. Okay, first you threaten some fire breathing. Probably get th through for two lifelink. Yep, go back up to nine. There's your apocrisite, and now... Yeah, I think he's content to just block Guildmage here. Yeah. Let the apocrisite die, come Absolutely. back as a four, four, three turns from now. Oh, we got a four, four... Uh... Oh no, it's a three three. We we, we don't have uh, we need one more color or mana. Just just the three three <laughs> extra oracle. Like extra oracle may have been a little more trouble and it's been worth for Dave. It's basically been a grizzly been a hill giant? Yeah. Someone who knows Dave well has just mentioned you're not going to talk about an extra article. <laughs> oh, but you know what? He's going to be able to put a counter on it. Oh, he can put a plus one, plus one counter with the guild, guild mage. Nice! <laughs> That's where the fourth plus one, plus one counter comes from. That's awesome. But in this case, he just decides to... No, move. he's just he didn't realize he was still in combat. He needs to learn how the undo key is. Control-Z, Dave. <laughs> Control-Z. It's not Alt-U anymore. It's Control-Z. There you go. <laughs> you can rebind it to Alt-U if you want to continue to use Alt-U as your undo. But I, I might have to do that because I'm, I'm, I'm conditioned to alt I mean, the, the rest of the world has convinced me that undo is control Z. But I understand completely. No, no, he did. He did put the counter on the on the. Oh, really? On the guild mage, yeah. That's surprising. Aaron Forsythe looks like he's come over to help. Seems like there are not many matches left. Seems there's like there's your, probably there's, people there's Aaron. Can, there's three out. There's more the useful than this one, there's three. Yeah, there's two others in addition to this one. Uh, Mariah and Helen are still playing. And Mr. Scotty Mack and Matt Gregory are still oh, playing. Scotty Mack and Matt Gregory. They're in game three. So Stinkweed Matt Gregory looks way ahead. Pseudo death touch. Right. Yeah. Four death touch was a key word, basically. Yeah. Well, you, you can't get her. It's combat damage, right? So you yeah, can't there a, were, you can't hermetic study. And that's why a lot of these haven't been sort of retconned in Oracle. Yeah, it's because there were like three or four different flavors of death touch. Right. Some of them said damage. Some of them said combat damage. Oh, he drew a planes and actually just got to naturally at Oracle. <laughs> oh. But not interested in attacking Guild Mage into Stinkweed Imp. Packer so it ticks away. <laughs> Getting closer to pestilence demon. <laughs> we are gonna 
the Grave Digger Street Race. <laughs> Very excited. <laughs> I mean, that's over Rage Mutt, too. <laughs> Could have just played a Rage Mutt. Nope. Rather Grave Digger Street Race. <laughs> Uh, we, got, we got one fair win for the community team. Mariah Pagliacco defeats Helen Bergeau. Okay, so they're on the board? They're on the board. That leaves one match outstanding besides the one you guys are watching. And doesn't look good for the community on that one either. Really? Okay. Watsi's looking good over there? Yes. So they're definitely cutting into it. They've already got five wins. Is that right? Yeah, yeah one, two, three, five, five. Now. five, one, two matches. This is one of them. Who's going to win your game? Boy, you know, I, I, I want to. Well, I mean, even if Dave wins this right. game, right? Tom's up a game. This is game two. Uh, Tom's up a game. I feel obliged Dave's to ask for a clock check. Six minutes fifty-four seconds for Dave Humphreys. Yeah, and like he's not going to win this game quickly. True. Yeah, he has to win two games in that six forty-five. Yes, he might not win this game in six forty-five, forty-one, forty, thirty-nine. I'm not convinced he wins this game anyway. I mean, it's one of these, like, mana screw versus mana flood games. Yes. Where, you know what? When the screw guy draws out of it and actually gets to cast his spells, they usually win. They have more spells. Like, Dave's... I mean... I, mean, I, th I think Dave actually wants to be, like, trading a creature or doing something here. Like, maybe use the second, the first ability of the... Guild mage and you know get that sack that albino troll to get something else back. And right. Yeah. I mean, he can edge oracle to draw cards. He can sack albino troll to get the edge oracle back. I mean, he's got stuff. Guild mage to hand or battlefield. Okay. Hand. Then 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 edge oracle's fine to return. Yeah, turn. that's what I thought. <laughs> oh, we're just gonna play street race. We're gonna swamp walk. Swamp walk. Commander, yeah. Yeah. He copied. Yeah. You can see when shapeshifted it too. <laughs> it was stupid. <laughs> the oft forgotten swamp lock mode. It's not forgotten by living end players. No, no. It wins a lot more games than it seems like it should for living end players. Coming up on the five-minute mark for Dave Humphreys. Yeah. I mean, that Guild Mage does, I think, give him the edge in this game. I think. But, like, he's got a... Not without a Apocrysite a keeps coming back. Stinkweed can block and come back. This game looks long and complicated from here. And meanwhile, Tom's got a Pestilence Demon in his hand. So those guys are going to trade, and I think you're going to see the Guild Mage sacrifice the Albino Troll to bring back the Empath. That's so many clicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in fact, he opts to do that over a Nest Invader. Sure. We are, I believe, we're at pest. No, we're not quite at pest on Steam Man yet. Swamps have been walked. Oh, he's going to sacrifice that historical here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one you want to bring back, the Guild Mage. See how man is short of doing it here, though? Yeah, that's why. Well, he 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 would have had to have been albino troll to be have the mana to do it. Plays the uh, mnemonic cutthroat. No. Level levels it up. Draconic cutthroat. No. more death touch. <laughs> oh, ribbons and knight with the fertile ground to pay blue.
Because clearly what Dave Humphreys needs in this game is more incremental advantage. <laughs> I'm glad you and he agree. <laughs> I mean, I'm a big fan of incremental advantage. For life, a card, Ulamog's Crusher, that could end things in a hurry. If Stinkweed Imp could ever get out of the way. So we're just like Nest Invader rampant grass here. Uh, I'm a big fan of guild maging back something. I mean, if it wasn't for clock, the edged oracle is a nice line. Oh, well, never mind ish. Blaze! <laughs> that seems like a magic card. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> Well, yeah. it seems like an old white bordered old frame magic yeah, card. Yeah. This is uh, It was uncommon by seventh edition. Just you know, the the, the slew of removal we've seen in Tom Ross's yeah. deck. Yeah, he definitely got the removal the removal deck. Looks like he's built it well. I think he is he just gonna uh, get rid of this guild mage? Oh no, he's gonna rage mutt. Okay. Sure. Okay. Rawr. Person back. Yeah, he just... So now what's the play here? Do you put the counter on the guild rage? Yes. I certainly don't want my guild mage to die. Yep. I think you can always... Sack the Obino Troll to get that get historical later, right? Right. You got a well, and, he's, and he's got the, he does have the uh, Crusher to play this turn. Sure. Uh, but he's going to Blaze to kill the Guild Mage. Oh, finish one, it One one point of damage from the Blaze to kill the Guild Mage. Well, here's Little Mog's Crusher. Now, what's the white card? Big scary Eldrazi. Eight eight. Is that a is that a pacifism up top at hand? Yeah, it is, yeah. and that'll deal with uh, Stinkweed. Seventh edition had a couple of stinkers in the art department. <laughs> not a fan of that pacifism no, that, that art. I think he's taken off his armor and sword and yeah, going, sure. to, going to the beach. I, just, <laughs> I was backing up your point. Via. Well, yeah, well, you have to get away from it all. <laughs> And Rampant Wind. <laughs> 259 for Dave Humphreys. <laughs> Tom, a clock management veteran, is kind of laughing at the Rampant He's got two there. Death Touchers he can leave on defense, too. The Both the the Nakana Cutthroat and the Stinkweed Imp can trade for that right. Ulamog's Crusher, which essentially takes all the sting out of Humphreys' board position. I mean, he'll lose two permanents to the Annihilator on the Crusher, which is less than ideal. Um, but I think if you leave both of those on defense, you play around anything like, like a pacifism. Right. I mean, that's got to be the, the kind of card Tom's worried about here. Yeah, you just key rune and... Yeah, Tom doesn't need to do anything. I mean, he's key just going to say win. go. He's oh, he leveled he, up Narcana. Yeah, he, he want, he's got the first strike. Oh, now he's first striking. Touch. Even better. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that I'll, one's great. I will happily sacrifice two permanents and block. So we're going to see pacifism. Oh, he's going to cycle. He's got a green in his mana pool. I'm sure pacifism is going to hit the cut through. Oh. Well, suddenly. So you can brain spoil one and pacify the other. Well, you want to pacify Stinkweed him so he can't get it back. I mean, you can't dredge it many times in limited, but given the choice, Cutthroat in the graveyard is less scary than a dredge guy in the graveyard. <laughs> this is just academic at this point, though. I mean, Dave. There's no way Dave can win two games in two minutes. But, I mean, I think he wants to try to win this game. This is kind of an interesting game. I kind of want to see how it resolves. I mean, I thought Tom had it until. So, oh, he went the other way. Pacifies Cutthroat. He's going to cast the brain spawn. Let's rid of the stink we have for now. And 
in comes Ulamog Crusher. I, I guess Stinkweed was always heading to the graveyard anyway, because if you pacify it, you're just going to sack it to Oh, sure, later. sure, sure. Yeah, of course. It doesn't actually matter that much. Right. Obviously, sacking the pacified creature is one of the permanents that's going to die to Crusher. Tom doesn't want to take a hit. Oh, he's got eight power. Yeah, he can actually trade here. Pump kills two, loses his Crusher. Tom Ross is down to a 4-4, four, four. but we know he's got a Pestilence Demon, and we know Dave's got a land. Tom dredges back Stinkweed Imp, so he can play Kirun Stinkweed here, have Stinkweed available on defense. Yeah, I think Tom Ross wins this game, even if it wasn't for Clock. I mean, certainly Humphreys needs a top deck right now. Right. Yeah, Tom at a healthy 16. Exactly. And Penumbra Spider's not, not good enough. Yeah. Block. Do you trade Stinkweed for Nestinator? No. No. And Pestilence Demon. Yep. Get in for four. It's another cool game. Yeah. I, mean, I like the way both players played this game. These are clearly two guys that know how to play Magic quite well. If not quickly. Fair. Oh, he's, <laughs> Pestilence Demon is 8, 2, 4, 5, 6. Oh, sorry. Pestilence Demon needs New Benali to be untapped. <laughs> it's time. It's time. Squeeze and brace. I need to see Squeeze and Brace. I would kind of like to see Squeeze and Brace on a Pestilence Demon. That is pretty funny. We may be ahead. I mean, Pestilence Demon, pretty self explanatory. 7-6 yeah. with Pestilence. Is that Sprout Swarm? No, 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 no sorry. Slime Moldy. Slime Moldy. So we're going to make a giant fatty. You might see Squeeze and Brace on a Pestle and Steaming. The giant fatty still gets blocked by Stinkweed. Oh, oh Dave's at seven anyway. So all he's got, he's got two turns of chump blocking with the number spider. Yeah, 11, 11 ooze. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, boo. And attacks. Doesn't care about the 11 11. Wants the three damage. And pestilence. And pestilence. I guess they fixed that, huh? Or it's What's different. Humphreys is in three. Three activations of Pestilence Demon. He does not die to his clock. <laughs> he dies to his Pestilence Demon. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So Tom Ross gets one for the community side. Yeah, and uh, do we have uh, something to look at Replay? in the red zone? Yes, we do. We have something in the red zone. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to queue it up for you right now. It is the third game, Matt Gregory, Gregory versus Scott McCallum. And we're going to walk you through this one. This, uh, this one did not end how I thought it would. I'll say that. So in the early stages here, it looks like players are just sort of developing out their board. Foul Germinator, Ash Zealot, Grotag Siege Runner here. I am questioning whether this is actually game three. This does not look the same. Nope, I'm gonna here, I'm gonna back out and bring up a different <coughs> game because that is not the same game that I just watched. It was watched. an older jailbreaker. Yeah, I like that game. Uh, I'm sorry to lead you down that path, but I wanna really show you the third game of the match, the one that ultimately decided who won this because it was an incredible game. 
with a great finish as well. So let's see if this is it. If, if not, I'll, I'll replay game one. I will go right through this thing. Yeah, this doesn't look like it either. All right, so what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to bring up game one, and that's going to be game three. And I have utter confidence in this fact. All right. So this looks more like it. Here we go. So Scotty Mac has, has uh, put together a blue-red tempo deck is the best way I can describe it. Uh, uses a lot of really nice tempo plays. He's got a, a drift of phantasms here to kind of hold things at bay. Thal Germinator's going to battle, but to, to no effect. And a Dream Spoiler, which is so a good start for Matt here. Um, Ash Zealot is able to get in the red zone and just start pecking away at damage. And it's always interesting to watch these type of games because this game ultimately ends up being pretty stalled out. Um, there's a lot of creatures played, remove soul, soul on a spine worm here. But this, these little pokes of damage that Scotty Max able to get in start mattering in the later stages of the game in a pretty big way, even if they don't look like a big deal here. So let's grind here. Let's uh, warm pilfers back our spine worm, Vol volcanic can or the pilfers again to get in for damage. Scotty knows that this deck is a tempo deck and he needs to keep applying pressure in order to really leverage the type of cards he has. He gets his opponent down to 12, but now Matt, who's under the impression that they're still racing, also doesn't have any good blocks anyway, is going to jam and replay Spine Worm here. Torrent of Stone takes it down and there's two more damage. So now halfway there for Scotty Mac. This is game three, by the way. So he's got to win this one, but he's under a ton of pressure. He's down to 12 himself and still... As you can see, let me pause real quick here. The creatures keep flowing. Spore cap spider and even a jailbreaker for the ground to block the ash cell. And the spider is going to hold back anything in the air as well, as you can see. So no attacks here from Scotty. And it's starting to look like things have turned around for him. And you can kind of get that feeling here from Matt as well as he jams with his whole team here. He's got a Thalid Germinator that he can use to pump if he needs to. And he, in fact, does putting this board state out. Now, this is the point of the game where I'm real happy. I was just <laughs> saying, I see why you selected this game. Yeah. So there's a Mole Drifter here, uh, played just straight up for Scott McCallum. He's going to keep his hand loaded up at five cards, but an Icker Slick for the full value here on end step for Matt is going to take down Ash Sell it, hmm. get him a card. As Scott passes the turn back. So it's 12 to 8. Bad guys. Disembowel kills his only remaining creature, and things are not looking good for Scott McCallum at this point. I think we'd all agree. Skyreach Manta adds to the board to continue the beats, but now Scotty starts to at least get back in it a little bit. Tarax Bladewing, 4-3, Flying Haste. Now, unfortunately, he doesn't really have a reasonable attack because he'd be dead on the, on the crackback, so it's just going to sit back as a blocker. Now, interestingly here, Matt decides not to attack with Skyreach Manta, forcing a trade or, or maybe a block here. Uh, and instead just get in with his two other creatures. Now, this is where it gets inter interesting. Scotty Mac, Fatal Attraction, goes on Thal Germinator. Now, Matt decides to save his Germinator by sac sacrificing a Sapperling to keep it alive from the initial effect from the Fatal Attraction. You can see it deals two damage. But, as we can see, he's really wanting to get that one more attack in with it. This gets him another Sapperling as well. He makes the Sapperling, attacks with both of these creatures again, leaves back the Skyreach Manta, he's on 8 life, rescind the Bounce spell, and <laughs> Regress takes care of both and clears the way for Tarek's Bladewing to get in for 4. Now that's only halfway done. As Matt's sitting on 4 life, he untaps, plays Boro Signet so that he can make an even bigger Skyreach Manta, and then the Spore Cap Spider as well, and things are looking pretty good for him. Boom! Mm. Oh, <laughs> wow. Bolt for Mr. Scotty Mac. For Xaxis. Takes it down for Xaxis. So remember that damage early in the game? We had a couple of pecks with the, uh, with the two twos on the ground. Those added up, and he needed literally every piece of damage that he got in order to finish off his opponent with a prophetic bolt. So he pulls one out, and I think that made it 5-3. I'll let yeah. you guys recap it. I'll send it back over. Yeah, 5-3. So Wizards picks up six points. Okay. I mean, five three is what they need to do. That nineteen point lead is now a thirteen point lead. They only got to do that a couple more times, and, and they're right there. Right. Uh, absolutely. They got one more one more round here of uh, sealed deck. Right. And then we go into 
The Cube Draft. The Cube Draft. The stipulation Cube. We have an interview, though, right now with the de facto captain of the community team, Paul Chion. Uh, we're going to send it down to the floor and hear from Nate Price and Paul Chion. Up. I am Nate Price, and I'm joined this time by Paul Chion. How's it going, Paul? It's going well, going well. Starting out a little rough, but uh, chose to go with a sweet deck instead of an actual uh, solid deck. So what were your two options? So I had the choice between a blue-green deck, uh, kind of a tempo blue-green deck, splashing black for a little bit of removal. And then I saw that I had a Kadama's Reach, a Search for Tomorrow, and a Fertile Ground, and a Guild Gate. And then in my sideboard, I saw a Legacy Weapon just staring right at me. And I was just like, mm. there was a Faith Fetters I could easily splash. Whatever, why not? What the hell? So I, I, I put it into the deck, took out a bunch of cards that is good for my curve. <laughs> like just discarded all my two, three, and four drops to add a seven drop to my deck. I got to play it. Unfortunately, uh, uh, I was not able to win that game. But I still really like my deck. I think it's really fun. And I am still waiting to activate Legacy Weapon for a turn. I mean, I did see it get into play at least once. I did, and it was off of all basics. I was just like, uh, he even like uh, killed my swamp, uh, my Golgari Signet <laughs> to get rid of my Black Source, and then I just naturally drew like the one swamp in my deck to cast it. But uh, hopefully, we still have another round. So nice. So uh, you have you you just recently rejoined the Pro Tour again, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yes, I did. Um, uh, top Ford Pro, uh, Grand Prix Portland with teammates uh, Luis God Vargas and Efro. They let's just say they had to do a lot of heavy lifting. You know, <laughs> I fortunate enough to team with two of the best players in the world, and they played great all day. And I believe in day two they did not lose a match going into the top four, so that really helped. And uh, really, really excited about Honolulu. We're going to meet up a week ahead of time, and uh, hopefully, I can contribute to the team. Awesome. Uh, now, Luis Scott Vargas is one of the players who's actually been the like the pro community's representative here at the Community Cup before. So I'm sure he's told you quite a large number of stories. Has, has your experience so far this weekend lived up to the hype I'm sure he gave you? Oh, yeah. I mean, this has been a total blast. Like, every format, it, um, even the, the deck building, the the flavor yeah. construct, Iron Root Chef, I, I actually spent 20 minutes just trying to find all cards that had wordplay with the Wandering Bard. And then they were like, 10 minutes left. I didn't have a mana base. I had 70 unplayable cards in my deck and had to just like randomly just keep going through cards to sift through. And then ultimately I ended up with a 60 card deck with white cards and no planes and a singleton thespian stage in the sideboard, yeah. uh, which uh, apparently gave me extra points though oh from yeah. the flavor judges. So yeah. uh, they, they really, really liked what you put together there. Yeah, 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 yeah it was great. It was great. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to actually the next format, which is cube draft with stipulations and I have not a clue what to expect there. Well, uh, unfortunately, we've only got one more round here of the eight booster pack sealed and then we'll have an opportunity to find out. So, all right. Yeah. All right well, I uh, appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. We're going to go ahead and send it back and uh, appreciate it. Thanks all for joining us this time around. Uh, we'll see you guys after one more round. Thanks, Nate Price. Thanks, for, uh, Paul Chia.